Greetings, everyone. On behalf of the QTM team, we are honored to welcome you back to the seventh edition of our webinar series and the platform to begin our, to begin our industry's recovery and strengthening of the travel and tourism sector. To formally start the session, please allow us to update you with QTM's participation. Since we restarted our efforts in March, after what has been an extremely tough time for the industry, we are excited to announce the big brands that have already confirmed to exhibit at the show, including the African Tourism Board, Visit Cyprus, the Azerbaijan Tourism Board, Korea Tourism Organization, the Rwanda Tourism Board, the Tanzania Embassy in Qatar, and Ennet, the Italian Tourism Board, to name but a few, and will be featured alongside our esteemed strategic partner, Qatar Tourism, our founding partners, Discover Qatar and Qatar Airways Holidays, and our esteemed sponsors in Doha Bus, Ritaj Hospitality, and Qatar Airways. The excitement is certainly building, and the response has been overwhelming, as people from all over the world are itching to get back to face-to-face -to -face events, and more importantly, travel. With just over three months to go until the much-anticipated Qatar Travel Mart exhibition, various opportunities have already been unlocked, and in, con and in conjunction with this, we continuously engage our travel and tourism industry peers with the latest updates and meaningful conversations. And therefore, today, we are proud to bring you another exciting session entitled Tanzania, the future of tourism. During this session, our set of distinguished speakers will take us to one of Africa's visual masterpieces, Tanzania. Prepare to explore and discover the country's astounding wildlife, charming beaches, fascinating ancient towns, archeological sites, and geological wonders. At the end of the session, we guarantee that all our travel enthusiasts who are joining us today will be able to jump to the first opportunity to travel to Tanzania and plan their trip accordingly. To all our participants, kindly note that you are currently muted. However, you may type your questions in the chat box at any point, which will then be addressed by our speakers at the end of all their topics. Please can I ask that you specify to whom you would like your questions to be addressed so they can be answered later on. To formally start our webinar, please allow me to introduce our set of distinguished speakers. However, before anything else, uh, Her Excellency Fatma Rajab would like to extend her sincere apology for she won't be able to join us live today due to a very important engagement. Therefore, let us start with our first speaker. Ambassador Edwin Novat Rotogaruka, unfortunately, is having some uh, technical diff difficulties at the moment. Uh, we're hoping that he might be able to join us shortly. He is responsible for planning, coordinating, supervising, and directing all trade development activities within and outside of Tanzania. He is also the former director of domestic market and trade development in the Tanzania Trade Development Authority, as well as the former director of export promotion in the Board of External Trade. Our second speaker is Dr. Abdullah Mohamed Juma, the executive secretary of the Zanzibar Commission for Tourism. Dr. Abdullah Mohamed Juma was born in Zanzibar. He holds a PhD in communication, master of, a, of business administration and a bachelor's degree in political science and public administration. He is an executive secretary of the Zanzibar Commission for Tourism, which is the government autonomous body responsible for regulating and promoting tourism in Zanzibar. He is an expert in tourism industry by working on the sector for quite some time and undertakes international tourism marketing as a research area during his MBA studies at the University of Sunderland in the UK. He is considered as a cooperative stakeholder of different tourism associations in Zanzibar, United Republic of Tanzania, East African and SADC countries, as well as China, India, and some Middle East nations. We are privileged to have you with us today, Mr. Abdullah. Our third speaker is Dr. Gladstone Mlay. He'll be speaking on behalf of Ms. Petrita Limo, who can't be here with us today due to an urgent commitment. Dr. Malay is the Acting Foreign Market Manager of the Tanzania Tourist Board, an autonomous corporate body operating under the Ministry of Natural Resources and Tourism of Tanzania. Dr. Gladstone Malay is born in Kilimanjaro, Tanzania. He holds a Doctor of Philosophy in Tourism and a Master of Tourism Planning and Management. He served as Meeting and Convention Manager and as a senior marketing officer in charge in Lake Zone, before he was appointed as research and tourism product development manager. We are thrilled to have you uh, join us today, Mr. Dr. Mlay. Our fourth speaker is Mr. Sharif A. Sharif, the executive director of Zanzibar Investment Promotion Authority. 
Mr. Sharif holds a Master of Science in Economics, and before his current position, he served for 11 years as a Director of Investment Facilitation of ZIPA and was in charge of approval and appraisal of private capital investment projects. Between 2003 and 2010, he worked with the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Natural Resources and Environment as the Chief Planning Officer and later Director of Policy and Planning. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Sharif. Our fifth speaker is Mr. Christian Makombe, the Principal Marketing Officer of the Ngorongoro Conservation Area Authority. Michael Christian Makombe is a graduate of Eastern and Southern Africa Institute of Management with a Master of Business Administration and Bachelor of Commerce and Management from the University of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. As the Principal Marketing Officer with Ngorongoro Conservation Area Authority, he has developed a vast knowledge in terms of tourism marketing while also working with pension funds in Tanzania, he has been equipped with the necessary skills in the service industry. We are delighted to have you with us today, Mr. Makombe. Our sixth speaker is Ms. Beatrice Morris Kessy, the Assistant Conservation Commissioner heading up the business development section at Tanapa headquarters, overseeing tourism development and marketing across the organization. She holds a master's degree in tourism development from the University of Surrey in the United Kingdom, a Bachelor's of Science in Environmental Science and Management from the Sopion University in Morogoro, Tanzania, a Diploma in Wildlife Management from the College of African Wildlife Management in Kilimanjaro, Tanzania, and lastly, a Postgraduate Diploma in Leadership at Alto University in Finland. It's an honor having you today, Ms. Kesey. Now, before we begin with our presentations, it would be great uh, to get an idea of our attendees' views as far as traveling to Tanzania is involved. And so we have formulated a simple poll for our audience. We'll bring up the poll now. And the question is, how thrilled are you to explore Tanzania and its wonders? Of course, the options are very thrilled, somewhat thrilled, not thrilled at all, or unsure. I will allow a short time for our audience to cast their votes, which I have no doubt will be leaning in the direction of being extremely excited to travel and explore the beautiful nation of Tanzania. Perfect, I think that's enough. Uh, let us look at the results. And of course, as expected, our audience answered a big yes, which of course comes as no surprise. Perfect. And now to jump jumpstart the session, let us hear a pre-recorded message from Her Excellency Fatma Raghav, the Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and East African Corporation. We would like to thank Her Excellency for taking the time to record this message, and we look forward to seeing you in November. Ahlan wa sahlan. Good afternoon, distinguished guests, dear participants, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings from the United Republic from Tanzania the land of Serengeti, Gorongoro, and beautiful islands of Zanzibar. I'm very honored to be part of this important first ever webinar to promote Tanzania tourism and to explore opportunities for trade and investment in tourism, mining, arts and culture and sports sector, as well as entertainment and hospitality industry, among others in Tanzania. Allow me to express my gratitude to Next Fairs for organizing this such important webinar in collaboration with the Embassy of the United Republic of Tanzania in Doha. The United Republic of Tanzania is blessed by many tourist attractions which are known worldwide, such as the highest mountain of Kilimanjaro, which is the highest mountain in Africa, and the Great Plains of Serengeti, the natural wonders of the Gorongoro Crater and the Spice Island in Zanzibar. Adding to that, Tanzania is also endowed with natural landscapes, wildlife, water bodies, with millions of species, and above all, very friendly people of Tanzania with their very beautiful language of Swahili. Distinguished participants, I'm speaking today as the Deputy Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and East Africa Cooperation. However, most of you know me that I was the first ambassador of Tanzania to the state of Qatar. During my tenure, I worked in cooperation with Next Fairs to bring Tanzania to Qatar. 
This webinar is a proof of the efforts we put together to see Tanzania tourism sector in its entirety is promoted in Qatar for mutual benefit. Tanzania and Qatar have excellent bilateral relations which have continued to grow. This is a clear indication that Qatar is ready to open up and take advantage of the many opportunities available in Tanzania tourism sector. Furthermore, the Minister of Foreign Affairs recently introduced the Department of Economic Diplomacy in order to facilitate closely the participation of Tanzania in such events, among other things. And today we'll see the first ambassador in that department attending this special webinar. As I mentioned at the beginning of my remarks, the purpose of this webinar is to promote and welcome the Qatari people, businessmen, investors, and traders to actively engage with stakeholders from Tanzania and explore the vast opportunities available for investment, business, and trade. Therefore, it is important for Tanzania stakeholders to be well prepared to provide all necessary information in these areas and many others as may be required. Dear participants, from the 16th to 18th of November 2021, the Qatari International Exhibition for Travel and Tourism, uh, also known as Qatar Travel Mart 2021, will be taking place in Doha. The exhibition is an excellent opportunity for Tanzanian stakeholders to promote and showcase Tanzanian tourism as the pride of our country. It is my expectation that this webinar will guide participants as they prepare to participate in the QTM 2021 in November this year. Dear participants, with these brief remarks, allow me to officially now announce the Tanzania Future of Tourism webinar is now officially open. I wish all the participants a successful webinar with productive outcome. Thank you very much. Shukran Jazila Asante Nisana. Again, we would like to thank Your Excellency for taking the time to record this message and definitely looking forward to seeing you in November in Doha. Now, moving on to our first speaker for the session, let us welcome Ambassador Edwin Nova. Ruta Garuka with his opening remarks and insight on Tanzania and the future of tourism. Ambassador, the floor is yours. You may start. Your Excellency, Ambassador Fatma Rajab, Deputy Permanent Secretary, Minister of Foreign Affairs and the East African Corporation, Tanzania. Excellencies, Ambassadors, High Commissioners, and members of the Diplomatic Corps who are attending this uh, forum. Uh, invited guests, uh, panelists, dear participants. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Edwin Rutageruka, Ambassador Edwin Rutageruka, the Director of Economic Diplomacy, Minister of Foreign Affairs in the East African Corporation. I was appointed by Her Excellency President Samia Salu Hassan uh, in May. And uh, before, before, before the appointment, I was the Director General of Tanzania Trade Development Authority for about six years. And today, I feel greatly honored and privileged to, to attend this uh, webinar. My presentation uh, is divided in four parts. I will start with the introduction, the current status of tourism in Tanzania, the tourism potential, potentials, and the investment attractions and incentives will be the last part of my presentation. Coming to the first part of the presentation, tourism is one of the key economic sectors in Tanzania. Over the past few years, the sector's impressive growth has enhanced macroeconomic diversification from the traditional reliance on agriculture, where 
by about 38% of land is a protected area for conservation. Tanzania is exceptionally endowed with a variety of tourist attractions categorized into nature and non-nature based, including 17 national parks, 29 game reserves, 40 controlled conservation areas, 33 wildlife management areas, Ramsar is a wetland site, nature reserves, and two marine parks with 16 famous historical and cultural sites. We have Mount Kilimanjaro, the highest point in Africa, the Ngorongoro Crater, and the Zanzibar Highland. These are some of the tourist attractions uh, uh, which are found in Tanzania. The tourism industry continue to be very uh, impressive in the economy whereby it contributes, it contributes about 16% uh, of GDP. Every year, over 600 tourists visit Tanzania for different purposes, such as for safari, leisure, learning, explore and missions, the tourism industry employs more than 150,000 Tanzanians, where safaris account for 80% of tourist activities. Tanzania has continued to receive tourists despite the presence of COVID-19 outbreak. The Ministry of Tourism and Natural Resources in collaboration with stakeholders have set out various strategies to combat the effects of the pandemic, including preparing a guide to the operations of the tourism sector. As a result of these efforts, despite the presence of COVID-19, in 2020, Tanzania managed to attract about 620,000 international tourists and 571 local tourists who visited various attractions in the country. Let me talk about uh, the visa policy of Tanzania. All visitors must hold a Tanzanian a passport valid for six months or a month beyond the period of intended stay. Entry visa to Tanzania can be obtained in the Tanzanian diplomatic missions or any, any port of entry could be land or air. Tourist visa fee is about US dollars 50 valid for three years. Citizens would not require a visa to enter Tanzania include SADC and the East African community citizens. Hotels and lodges. Hotels, lodges, and resorts in Tanzania are available with different rates from low to high rates, depending on the quality needed by the client. Many of the lodges are situated close to some parts of tourist attractions. Peace and stability. Tanzania is free of ideological confrontations, ethnic problems, and labor disputes. It is a center of economic and political stability in sub-Saharan Africa that comfort many of our neighbors. Tanzania is internationally renowned for its abundance of wildlife resources, cultural heritage resources, forest resources, and exploited beaches and marine resources. Wildlife resources are among the supreme in the world and have been widely known for many years. National parks include Great Serengeti Plains, the spectacular Ngorongoro Crater, Lake Manyara and Africa's highest mountain Kilimanjaro in the north, while we have Ms. Kumi with Zungwe and Lua National Parks and Selu Game, which is called, now called Marimirere Game Reserve in the south. There are natural and cultural attractions that include the sandy beaches, excellent deep sea fishing, nature reserves. Then my next slide will highlight on the, uh, the, the, the why invest in the tourism sector in Tanzania. Number one is investment incentives and guarantees that are offered by the government of Tanzania. Tanzania offers a wide balance and a competitive package of fiscal and non-fiscal incentives with aim to encourage foreign direct investment at competitive fiscal regime on foreign trade. Non-fiscal incentives and fiscal incentives. Number one is 0% import duty and VAT exemption on capital goods and import duty back scheme. Refund of duty charged on imported raw material used for producing goods for export 
and goods sold to foreign institutions like the UN and the East agencies operating in Tanzania, and recognition of private property and protection against any non-commercial risks. And then allowed to repatriate all your profits, gains, and dividends from investment after tax. The last uh, uh, non-fiscal and fiscal incentive packages on favorable investment allowances and deductions. When we talk about stable investment environment, the pro-investment attitude by the government is clearly demonstrated uh, by the you know, innovative um, attitude by the government, uh, which is clearly uh, demonstrated, uh, demonstrated by the, the, the increasing number of foreign direct investment in the country. We have the Tanzania Investment Center, TIC, which is a, a government institution which serves as a one-stop center for all investors that coordinates, encourages, promotes, and facilitates all investments. In Tanzania mainland, why Zanzibar Investment Promotion Authority plays a similar role, and I'm happy that uh, uh, the, the CEO is, is with us today. On the, other, on the other hand, Tanzania has National Business Council, which is a, an institution. Uh, it is like a dialogue institution where government and the private sector interacts with diverse stakeholders, representatives to discuss about different issues. We have the attractive uh, investment fiscal regime and Tanzania has stable and predictable fiscal investment regime providing to all investors, including investors in the tourism sector. The free repatriation of funds is uh, one of the very attractive incentive package whereby the transfer of funds is allowed through any authorized bank. And uh, coming to the investment opportunities in the tourism sector, uh, we have opportunities for investment, which include, among others, in the co construction of hotels, leisure parks, golf courses, conference tourism, air ground transport, trophy hunting, sea and uh, lake cruising, deep sea fishing, to mention but a few. But investment opportunities in the national parks. According to the management plans of the Tanzania National Parks, Tanapa, and today we have a colleague from Tanapa, 12 national parks, including Katavi, Mkomazi, Luha, Sadan, Serengeti, uh, offers areas for investment for permanent tented camps and lodges. The modality for investment can be in a form of private ownership and joint venture. Investment opportunities in Ngorongoro conservation, the general management plan of 2006 for the uh, NCAA allows for the development of lodges and permanent tented camps in the designated sites inside the NCAA at Nasera Rock, uh, Lemuta and Kasile. Investment opportunities in Tanzania game reserves, there are 28 game reserves in Tanzania. Among these reserves is the renowned Mwarim Nyerele, or uh, uh, formerly it was known as Selu Game Reserve, that covers an area of 50,000 uh, square kilometers. The reserves are among the private pristine in, in, in inhabited wild places in Africa. Then we have uh, investment opportunities in Tanzania Forest Services, TFS Agency at Tembea City, forest areas in the Man Nature. Uh, we have investment opportunities in cultural heritage sites, and we have investment opportunities in local government authorities. My last two slides will highlight some strategies and recommendations for the future tourism development in Tanzania. The revitalization of the tourism sector requires strategies which can advance Tanzania's economic and social development. To achieve this, Tanzania is needed to enhance its competitiveness in the global tourism marketplace by implementing a tourism public awareness in the industry advocacy program. For tourism to grow in Tanzania, some reforms in policies and regulations are needed. Strategies to promote domestic tourism should also be formulated and implemented. Number two on the strategies, is to expand destination management capabilities at local, national, and regional levels. The success of Tanzania's tourism requires the effective management of tourism activities, 
at the regional local levels resulting in visitor satisfaction and tangible benefits to business and local communities while preserving, preserving, uh, preserving and conserving natural and cultural assets. There is also an opportunity and a need to develop new destinations, particularly along the coast in the southern part of Tanzania. Number three is to improve quality of services for visitors. An effective visitor-centered experience approach is needed to build the capacity of existing associations to provide services uh, of value to their members, will result, which will result in higher levels of business performance, more effective coordination and collaboration, and untimely increased customer satisfaction levels. And the last strategy is to design and implement a tourism management information system. Information is power, requiring reliable, current and timely collection, analysis and dissemination through government, business and civil society uh, collaboration. In Tanzania, Critical information is collected through exit survey, but not reported in a timely manner. Vital industry performance data such as hotel occupancy and the employment should be regularly updated and timely disseminated. I thank you very much for listening. God bless you all. Welcome to Tanzania. Thank you, Asanteni, Sana. Thank you. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much, Ambassador, for that very informative speech and uh, for engaging us with Tanzania's marvels and all the opportunities that are available. Uh, we appreciate it and thank you very much. Now, moving along, uh, let us listen to Dr. Abdullah Mohammed Juma, who will present his topic Beyond Beach, Stand, and Sun. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Abdullah. The floor is all yours. You may proceed. Thank you, Chair. Your Excellency Ambassador Fatma Rajab, Ambassador, Ambassadors and High Commissioners presented in this webinar, member from, from Qatar Travel Mart, panelists and participants of this webinar, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. As I've been introdu introduced by our chairperson, Max, my name is Dr. Abdullah Mohamed Juma. I'm Executive Secretary of Zanzibar Commission for Tourism. First, I would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to Embassy of Tanzania in Qatar and the Qatar Travel Mass for involving me in this important webinar. As you've been told, my presentation is going to say something about Zanzibar tourism. First of all, I would like to welcome you in Zanzibar. I would like, I would like to welcome the tourism stakeholders in from Qatar to come and work with us in Zanzibar because Zanzibar life itself is tourism. I'm saying Zanzibar life is tourism from the fact that the economy of Zanzibar depend most of it on tourism. If we look at Zanzibar gross domestic product, you can find that over 27% of GDP of Zanzibar depend upon tourism and over 80% of foreign exchange earning of Zanzibar depend upon tourism. Also the direct employ employment of Zanzibar, about 33 direct employment is coming from tourism and over 60,000 plus tourism plus in, in employment is coming from tourism. Also the point I want to in in insist to you is that when I say Zanzibar life is tourism, I mean it because Zanzibar have got 1.3 million, 1.3 million people, but it's got over 500,000 500, tourists per year. But what I want to, pre to present to you is why you have to work with tourism industry of Zanzibar. There's a number of tourism opportunities and resources available in Zanzibar. For instance, Zanzibar is cultural heritage stone town, which is a world heritage center. 
when you, when you say Zanzibar is a world heritage site, we mean it because Zanzibar people are coming from all over the world. So the culture of Zanzibar people has been is, is the contribution, is the image, is the mingling of people through all over the world. Take it from East Asia, in Indians, Americans, Europeans, also people from Middle East and Africans themselves. But also Zanzibar is due to the due, due to that characteristic, Zanzibar is, lead, is rich of life history. The building of Zanzibar, which were built from 18th century, they are still used until now. Also, Zanzibar is rich of marine and terrestrial environment, nice water temperature, peace and tranquility, and also underwater rooms. But I would like also to tell you that Zanzibar is more than a destination. Why I'm saying Zanzibar is more a destination? Because in Zanzibar, the tourism season is all over the year. You can, you can tour in Zanzibar, you can organize tour in Zanzibar all of 365 days of the year. There's no season in Zanzibar. All over the year, the season in Zanzibar. You can find an, a number of tourism services and activity throughout the year. That's why I'm telling you Zanzibar is the home of tourism in Africa. If, let me tell you a bit about the, the stone town. The stone town of Zanzibar is World Heritage Site. We call it Stone Town because it's the oldest town within, within this part of Eastern Africa, but also is a place where cultures from East Africa, Asia, and Middle East have collided and lived together for centuries. Its built environment is testament to this hist historical cultural fusion. Windings and buildings evoke a past trade in people ivory and spices, sultan and the harems, also colonial powers struggle, also bring, bring the rich history of Zanzibar. In Zanzibar, Zanzibar, there have been several colonies. There have been Portuguese, Germany, and British, also as Oman Arab, all of them has colonized Zanzibar in different time of the year. In 2000, UNESCO named Stone Town of Zanzibar as World Heritage Site, due to its richness of history, as I told you. But not only the heritage site of Stone Town and other historical sites available in two major islands of Zanzibar, in Unguja and Pemba, but also Zanzibar have rich in marine protected area. Zanzibar is rich in marine because while the world is talking of the desert of the forest in, in land forest, in Zanzibar, there's a sea forest you can find you can find a lot of tree, different species in the sea of Zanzibar. So Zanzibar is an ideal place for, ideal places for, for, for snorkeling, but also for diving eh, because of its richness in, in marine area. Also there, there are some forests in Zanzibar there. In Zanzibar we have, we have so many small forests, but the major forests are three. We have one forest in Pemba called Ngezi, and also have other forests in Josani, Unguja, and other forests in Masingini. In this forest, it's not only trees, but this forest of Zanzibar, you can find a lot of species of tree, but also species of animals. And also some, some small ponds, which, uh, which is rich also with animals. In this, uh, if we take, for instance, the Josani forest is the home of red colobus monkey. The red colobus monkey cannot be found in anywhere in the world except in Zanzibar and Amazon forest. But in Amazon forest, you have to take edges to find red colobus monkey. But in Zanzibar, Josani forest, they are the one who, who are going to welcome you once you reach the, the, our, our forest, Josani. But also you can exchange food and exchange if you can talk also to, to monkeys, you can also talk to them. To them. They are very, very, they are very, very Im important species in the world and they are served here. We protect them and they can only be found in Zanzibar and Amazon, as I told you. But also in Zanzibar, as, as it's been mentioned by the ambassador, Zanzibar enriched in beaches. The beaches of Zanzibar, you can call them the virgin beaches 
because those beaches of Zanzibar are not yet destroyed by not yet destroyed by any tourism activity. So for, for Zanzibar beaches are ideal places for Moroccan tour operators to bring their tourists to visit Zanzibar. But not only beaches, in these sand white beaches, also they are rich in, uh, in, uh, in, in different type of, of trees. Zanzibar is called a spice island of Zanzibar. Why Zanzibar is called a spice island? Zanzibar is also called a spice island because of a number of spices available in Zanzibar from cloves, cardamom, cinnamon, and other different species, which some of them you can find anywhere in Zanzibar. But also Zanzibar is a house of, uh, or a place for very, very exotic resorts and hotel. In Stone Town of Zanzibar, we have uh, those old buildings, some of them have been changed to hotel, up to five-star hotel, and some of them are chain hotel, but also, there are some resorts in Zanzibar where tourists from all over the world, including the Qatar tourism, they can, they can, they can enjoy and rest peacefully. Another one important thing which you can find in Zanzibar hotel is underwater room. Zanzibar is the home of underwater room. When I talk of underwater room, this underwater room cannot be found anywhere in Africa. The first water room in underwater room in Africa has been found in Zanzibar at the Pemba Island. You can enjoy your holiday in this underwater room by sleeping with fishes. And even if you can talk with fishes, you can talk with them, but in the deep sea, you can sleep comfortably. There are a number of opportunities for investment also in Zanzibar on tourism sector. For instance, in, in part of hotel and, and restaurant, you can invest in Zanzibar to upmarket hotels and research, especially chain hotels, where a number of them are already in Zanzibar and other first class restaurants. Also, Zanzibar, is the, is, as I say, is the home of spices. So you can also invest in essential, essential oil, spices and herb, where you can, you, you can make business in Zanzibar aroma. Zanzibar aroma cannot be found in anywhere because of its special hubs, which are available only in Zanzibar. And this, this, this uh, era of Corona, a number of uh, essential oil and spices and herbs found in Zanzibar are very useful for helping the, the protection of people from getting Corona virus. But also other tourism services which can be found or opportunity to be invested in Zanzibar in tourism sector is conference and ex exhibition centers. Now Zanzibar is uh, adopting the mice tourism. So is a there is a number of opportunity for, for the investors and also for the tourism to, for the tourism to come and uh, meet in Zanzibar, make their conference in Zanzibar. Also Zanzibar is rich in sea sports throughout the Africa. Zanzibar is the leading area for the sea sports, name them from, from from snooker lane, fishing, swimming, and you name them, you can find them in Zanzibar. Also, before I finish my, my presentation, I will leave this to Mr. Sharif to talk about investment in Zanzibar, but as it's been mentioned by the ambassador, there, there is a good environment to invest in Zanzibar, as it's been, been mentioned, country stability, strategic location, because when we talk of strategic location, we mean that Zanzibar can find it in Africa and out of Africa. Zanzibar is the connection of Africa to the world. So the, the, the location of Zanzibar is very prime for investment, particularly in tourism area. Also the market, market potential, abundant resources, predictable fiscal regime, lucrative incentive packages, investment guarantee. But another important thing for the Zanzibar tourism package is Islamic tourism and halal tourism. Due to its historical nature, Zanzibar is very ideal place, places for Islamic tourism and halal tourism. And also the improvement of, uh, improvement of transportation to Zanzibar make it Zanzibar easy place for tourism from Qatar to get to Zanzibar. You can use a number of international airlines from Omania, Qatar, 
airways, your home online, your, your home airways, but also Turkish airways, Ethiopian airline, Condors from Germany, Lufthansa Group, Air France, the all Israel Air, Interflight from Belgium, KLM, Kenya Airways, Fly Dubai, they all make their journey direct to Zanzibar. But also due to its nature of uh, island in nature, Zanzibar is an ideal cruise tourism area. And Zanzibar annually receives a, a number of tourists from all over the world through cruise tourism. So with, this, with that few points, I'm glad to say that Zanzibar is an ideal destination for travelers looking for leisure, which is sun, sand, and sea, but also for heritage tourism, cultural tourism, sports and mice, and it's ready to work with Qatar tour operators and Qatar travel agents, always, as well as Qatar tourism investors. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Abdullah. Uh, again, very informative, uh, packed with information. Uh, I myself have been to Zanzibar. It really is a beautiful place. I can vouch for that. Um, and uh, I do agree with you. Um, next up, we have uh, Dr. Gladstone of Leh. Uh, he will be discussing the destination Tanzania, safe and open. Uh, Mr. Malay, please uh, take us to Tanzania. The floor is all yours. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As have said by the chair, my name is Dr. Gladys Tony Mlai from Tanzania. And today I'm presenting on behalf of our Director General, Tanzania Tourist Board. Then I will go directly to my presentation as part of the presentation already presented by the, our ambassador. So I will chip in the area which already are not yet presented. Then let us start with the Destination attraction in Tanzania. The destination attraction of the Tanzania are under the main three categories. That the first one is natural. There are, is national parks. There are, is game reserve, coastal areas, island, mountain, lake, waterfall, etc. The second part is cultural. That consists of the archaeological site. For instance, there is Odubai George. Then there are historical sites, including Bagamoyo. Kilwa Kiswan and Kilwa Sungomnara. Also, there is the rock painting site at Kondroa, or are located at the central part of Tanzania. And then there is the other cultural attractions that are found in the Lake Victorias and even in the western part of Tanzania. The last part is man made attraction that consists of the architecture, museum, and handcraft attractions. Then there is already the part of the protected area and assets, as mentioned by the ambassador, I'll shift it to the another part. There is properties under the World Heritage Site. Tanzania were blessed with the seven World Heritage Sites, and these are divided into three parts. There is cultural, natural, and mixed. The cultural one is Kondoa Rock Painting Art. The second one is Ruins of Kilwa Kiswan and the ruins of Songomnara. Then the third one is Stone Towns of Zanzibar. The natural World Heritage Site is Mount Kilimanjaro National Park, Selu Game Reserve, and the Serengeti National Park. The mixed one is Ngorongoro Conservation Areas, where there is the wildlife and the human being that consists of the Maasai. Let's go, let's go direct to the tourism circuit or zones. We have four zones. That the first one is the northern circuit, the second one is the southern circuit, the third one is the western side circuit, and the last one is the eastern zone or circuit. Let us start with the northern circuit that consists of the Lake Manyara National Park and the Lake and Tarangire National Parks. The second one is Gorongoro Conservation Areas, another one is Mount Kilimanjaro National Park, and the last one is Arusha National Park. Within this, the Northern Circuit also there is a lot of the cultural attractions and even the other business like mice or other events. In the Southern part of Tanzania, there is Selu Game Reserve, Ruaha National Park, Kitulo National Park, Hatavi National Park, and also there is cultural attractions. In the Western part of Tanzania, there is Serengeti National Park, Gombe and Mahale National Park, Lake Tanganyika, the World 
longest and the deepest lake in the world. Then there is also Kimondo. Also there is Burigi Chato National Parks. There is Ibanda Kierwa National Park. There is Rubanda Kierwa Sanani National Park. And the last one is Rubondo National Park, including the cultural attractions. Then the fourth or the last one is Eastern Zone or circuit, including the coastal and beach. That is Udzungwa National Park, Mikumi National Park, Nyerere National Park, Aman Nature Reserve, Pangani Beach, Bagamoyo Beach, Dar es Salaam Beach, Mafia Island, Museum and House of Culture, and also there is cultural attractions. Let's move direct to the small part of the other tourism product is. In all of the Tanzania, there are the several attractions or products like bed watching. You can find in the Northern party, Southern, Eastern, even Zanzibar. Also there is cultural tourism enterprises are also founders around the Tanzania, Northern, Southern, Eastern, the Western part of Tanzania. Also there is event or festivals as the famous one is Zanzibar International. The second one is South Zabusara. Karibu Kusin, Swahili Expos, Uristi Festivals. Also, there is water sport and sport fishing. There is mountain climbing and the trekking of unbeaten tracks. Also, there is the special honeymoon holidays all around the Tanzania, the Zanzibar, Kilimanjaro, Arusha, Mwanza, et cetera. Also, there is conference incentives, what you can call the in short mice. Okay, let me talk a little bit about the, when is the best time to come to Tanzania. Tanzania can be visited the whole years through. Though, best time to come to Tanzania is June to September. That is the cooler period. The best time to see the migration crossing is August to September. But here I specify the best but you can visit Tanzania from January to December. It is dependent on the areas where you prefer to visit. If you want to go to the forest, to the national park, so you can travel, you can visit it, but here I say the best one. Then as have said by the, our ambassador, I can shift it to another slide. Here, I try to check a little bit about the Middle East international tourist arrivals to Tanzania. Specifically, if you travel to check to Qatar for the year 2015 to 2020, really the number of the tourists, for instance, 2015, Qatar there is 1,113. 2016, there is 1,207. If you go to direct to the 2020, Though due to the COVID-19, but we get the number of the tourists 158. If we check the number of the Middle East, real there is a number of the tourists, but it need more or to promote and attract the tourists from the Middle East. That's why we are here today. Then let's shift to the part two. Despite of the fact that Tanzania was not significantly affected by the COVID-19, tourism has affected by the major international market because Tanzania mostly or more than 80% will depend on the international tourist. In this stage, all the government of the United Republic of Tanzania worked closely with the private sectors to develop the specific guidelines or what we call the SOP. And that's why up to now we are working together. We are using this to promote the tourists and solve the other issues based on the guideline of the UNWTO. This is an example that shows under the guidelines we supposed to use of the protective gears, hand sanitizing, physical distancing, body temperature screening, filling the surveillance forms, Pro marketing signs, regular disinfection of the terminals, and even having the several measures depending to the situation of the COVID-19. Let me discuss a little bit about the current situation about the international airlines. 
really Tanzania, we are blessing with the, what we can say, the sky are still open. And up to now, we have the major airlines, including Qatar Airways, Ethiopian Airlines, Emirates, KLMs, and other e Egyptian Airlines, Kenya Airlines, even South Africa Airlines. Most of these, they're coming to Tanzania, and we are still receiving the number of the tourists. What is the what is doing the all the government of Tanzania are doing now? Still, government of Tanzania, in cooperation with the embassies or private sectors, include the other organization, they are working together hand in hand in promoting in promotion through the online and digital platform. Also holding online meeting with the international travel agents with the effort of promoting and combating or against in trying to convince the COVID-19. Then also we have the several site inspection advising how we can protect to, to against the COVID-19. Okay. By conclusion, you can say Tanzania, we are safe. We are real taking the measure, all the measures regarding to the COVID-19. And that's why even the last two days, we received the several tourists around the world, and the number of the tourists are increasing day to day. That's why I am happy. Thank you for your listening. Thank you very much, Dr. Malay. Uh, again, very informative and a nice, compelling presentation. Uh, thank you for, for that very important information that you have shared. Uh, moving on uh, to our next speaker, who is uh, Mr. Sharif, A. Sharif. Uh, he will be speaking about investment opportunities in Zanzibar. Uh, please, Mr. Sharif, go ahead with your insightful knowledge on the various investment opportunities in Zanzibar. We look forward to hearing it. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Matthew, and uh, thank you for the uh, good presentation so far from the panelists and the audience. Hello, Jambo from Zanzibar. Uh, my presentation is about the investment opportunities in Zanzibar, and I have a uh, a small presentation that uh, I'd like to share with you, if I'm allowed. <clears throat> okay. Uh, as uh, everybody said about Zanzibar, is an ancient regional interport, a symbol of modernization and center of cultural fusion, simply an exotic destination that breathes untapped opportunities to beautiful and prosperous destiny. Zanzibar offers uh, lucrative incentives, opportunities, investment opportunities, and the best business environment that support easy access, competitive pricing, tax incentives, and solutions uh, for income needs. Why should we invest in Zanzibar? Uh, I think the ambassador said about the peace and tranquility and uh, economic uh, and uh, prosperity of this country. The strategic location of Zanzibar and proximity uh, with, uh, with Africa itself, but here we're talking about uh, uh, our region, regional inter uh, uh, East African community and SADC, etc. But uh, there is high growth potential. Uh, also, we have uh, lucrative business and exotic leisure. Uh, Dr. Bala told us, said a lot about uh, uh, the opportunities in tourism areas. But we have investment guarantees and incentives in, in those areas. Now, the focus at uh, this moment in time uh, is in regards to small islands. And Zanzibar, we, we, we are bestowed and endowed with uh, over 50 small islands. Many are rich in biodiversity and environmental resources. And these islands can serve uh, as marine protected areas, marine parks, forest reserves, coral rug farming areas, researches, and other, other, other recreational purposes. Uh, but also, there is a potential uh, area of investment in blue economy, and uh, it provides unlimited potential for marine transportation, 
oil and gas, marine research, uh, renewable energy, uh, marine uh, trade, tourism, and development of uh, fishing industry, including fishing in artisanal water, deep sea, and aquaculture products. In tourism, it's already been said, so I don't need to repeat that. Uh, but we, we, we are also engaging in promoting agriculture and Zanzibar has a very potential fertile land and uh, the good tropical weather where we can grow a number of crops. We have a lot of these exotic fruits in Zanzibar. Uh, Zanzibar is called Spice Island because uh, of its potential in uh, producing spices and vegetables, fruits, and other, other, other agricultural products. And also we are engaged also to promote uh, agro, agro processing. But also in manufacturing, we're encouraging uh, light manufacturing because this is an island. We don't allow heavy industry. And uh, we, we, we allow investment in food agro processing, like milling, processing, packaging, and canning. Uh, but also we promote textile, apparel, and beauty products, high tech industry, pharmaceutical, medical equipment, supply industries, electronics. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. In real estate, where there is a huge uh, uh, development now, and uh, recently we have uh, also published and uh, gazetted uh, new incentives on real estate, especially to developers and buyers. Uh, it's it is something that uh, we we really promote, and uh, we welcome uh, in potential investors to come and invest in smart cities or integrated resorts. Uh, any kind of uh, real estate uh, properties that uh, are good for businesses, uh, shopping malls, uh, convention centers, things like that, we allow them. On infrastructure, uh, Zanzibar infrastructure investment opportunities include road network, air and sea spots, sea, sea ports and other utility structures. But we also uh, promote energy, uh, Zanzibar provides opportunities, renewable energies. Uh, as, an, as an island, uh, we, we engage rather on renewable energy for, for our environment. So production of energy from solar, wind, sea waves, and waste management is mostly welcome. Zipa is also engaged in a free economic zone. We are, we are managing those uh, zones. And so far we have, uh, five free economic zones in Zanzibar, Fumba, Micheweni, Amani Industrial Park, Marhubi Free Port and Airport Free Port Zone. So those are the areas that uh, we, we promote uh, any kind of uh, mixed in investment that uh, can have a good uh, uh, opportunity for, for, for investment. We are also coming up with uh, a new initiative in regards to land. Uh, we are going to allocate uh, a number of investment in this land. We call it land bank. And we have already identified about 102 hectares of land uh, around Uruguja uh, and Pemba Island, but also these small islands, as I said before. Who we are, we are Zanzibar Investment Promotion Authority, uh, commonly ZIPA. It's a one-stop center responsible for promotion, facilitation, and aftercare services. Our vision is to make Zanzibar an attractive and competitive investment destination regionally and, and globally. If you need us, this is our, our, our contact. You have to go through our website as well, which is www.zipa.go.tz and you can write to us through the executive director of Zipa, and we have our, our, our email address there, info at zipa.go.tz. So karibuni sana Zanzibar, hakuna matata, and thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Mr. Sharif. Uh, again, very informative, enlightening presentation. I'm sure our uh, participants and attendees are, are extremely interested, and as we can see, there's a lot of uh, opportunity available uh, to everybody. Next up, uh, our speaker is uh, Mr. Michael Christian Makombe. He will be taking us to the amazing Ngorongoro masterpiece. Mr. Makombe, please uh, do go ahead. This is one we are definitely looking forward to. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, dear participants. 
As I introduced before, that's I'm Michael Christian Makombe coming from uh, Gorongoro Conservation Area Authority in Tanzania. I'm going to take uh, you through uh, the amazing Gorongoro. A principal, uh, our Gorongoro has been located in the Northern Tourism Circuit of Tanzania, in Arusha. It covers an area for 8,292 kilometers square and is uh, bordered with the Serengeta National Park. Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. No problem. Ah, you, you do. Okay, thank yep. you. And the area is bordered with, uh, the beauty of Ngorongoro can be uh, derived as a natural creation of beauty. And it's a popular destination of the world named by UNESCO. And it's appreciated both uh, locally and international for its uh, beauty. It's a unique uh, place to travel and enjoy. It is the only protected area within multiple land use where both uh, wildlife conservation and limited human activities are allowed. Uh, one of the most visited and extraordinarily impressive attractions in Tanzania is Gorongoro. It is uh, listed as an international biosphere reserve and inscribed at the UNESCO World Heritage Site boosting remarkable blend of wildlife, archaeology, geography, and uh, people. I am principal in Gorongoro Conservation Area Attractions has got, uh, we have uh, the crater, Gorongoro Crater, Impakai Crater, Olmoti Crater, Old Dubai Gorge and Old Dubai Museum, Shifting Sands, Lightori Footprints, Nasera Rock, Olkaren Gorge, Dutu, Endoro Waterfalls and Elephant Caves, Mount uh, Rolmarasin, Rosirua, Oldean, Makarot, Gold Mountains, and Saleh Plains, as well as the uh, uh, Maasai Kacha. In terms of uh, Gorongoro Crater, which uh, is our remarkable attraction, within that area, you can have an opportunity to see a lot of uh, animals at a uh, free range including the big five. Apart from Gorongoro Crater, we have a Pakai Crater, and this crater is a principal famous for walking activities. And uh, with uh, that one, through the walking safari, you'll be in a position to explore varieties of baits, plants, uh, butterflies, as well as the uh, wild animals such as water bats, uh, buffaloes, leopards, monkeys, and baboons. Also, we have uh, Andorra waterfalls and elephant caves. Uh, within that area, it's uh, easily accessed. It is from Andorra Gate, located close to Gibbs Farm. The elephant caves where for years elephants dug into the hills to acquire soil rich in minerals essential for their bodies. Also within that area, we'll be in a position uh, to, to, to have a walking, hiking, bed watching, plant education, as well as a sundown. Another area of attraction within our area is uh, almost a crater. The crater is endowed with an amazing scenery, spectacular Mungi waterfalls, mountain vegetations, birds and wild animals, including buffaloes, water bugs, bush bugs, as well as uh, baboons. We have a uh, Nutu as well. The, the area is close to Serengeti border. Nutu is covered with uh, uh, short glass plains, scattered uh, acacia trees, big marsh areas, and acacia woodlands. It's a famous area for carving ground for migratory animals from late December to April. Also, Ndutu is a host of resident wildlife such as the giraffes, impalas, elephants, lions, cheetahs, leopards, hyenas, and many others. 
throughout the, the year. Also within uh, uh, Ngorongoro Conservation Area, we've been in a position to visit uh, Olvai Gorge, which is a famous uh, paleontological and uh, archaeological site. Uh, the gorge length is about uh, 55 kilometer and depth of almost uh, 100 meter, well known for discover of uh, Zinger's Ropas Boise, skull dated uh, 1.7 million years ago by Lique in 1959. The exposed volcanic beds formed in the Prehensocene 32,000 to 2.6 million years ago, yield the record to part of past environments and fossil hominids attributed to Anthropicious Boise, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, artifacts from Old One, Akiran to Middle and later Stone Age with a wide range of fossilized fauna uh, remains. Also, we have a Old Vai Museum, which is located in the Ngorongoro Conservation Area. It's a modern museum nested in Old Vai Gorge area with a variable historical facts and the chronological stages of evolution back in time to the very beginning of uh, mankind. The museum exhibits uh, numerous fossils and uh, stone tools of hominid ancestors and uh, skeletons of many extinct animals excavated in Old Vai Gorge area and the realistic copies of the most important uh, uh, discoveries. Apart from the one mentioned, we have a Laetori footprints, and it's a famous site discovered that the oldest footprints of uh, early ancestors of humans discovered uh, in the world. The two early ancestors of the humans walked through world volcanic ash, and when the nearby volcano erupted again, the subsequent layers of ash covered the preserved and the oldest footprints of all humans named the uh, Australopithecus afarensis. Another attractions we have within the area is a shifting sand. It says spectacular moving ash, ash dunes found on the open plains located north of uh, Old Vai Gorge and close to Nasera Rock and Gold Mountains area. It is a remarkable crescent shaped black dunes composed of volcanic ash from the active volcano of Ordonyolingai mountain. Also, we have a Nasera rock, which is a unique rock on the plains standing 100 meters in the north of Old Gorge. It is recognized due to geological features, wealth of archaeological resources and history. For years, the Nasera rock used as a shelter for ancestors and animals. It is an interesting rock that supports life of birds baboons, leaf springers, reptiles, and uh, plants. Also, we have the Olkaren Gorge. It's an important nesting site for the Rupel's griffon vultures located in the Ngorongoro Conservation Area. The gorge is deep and narrow, extending to a length of almost eight kilometers long. It is a place to see vultures soaring, circling, and uh, gliding. Mountain Maros, Mount uh, Roll Mountain and Mount Rosaria uh, is another attraction within our area. And is the third highest peak in Tanzania with almost 3.700 meters above the sea level. The Rosaria Mountain rising 3,260 meters above sea level is an independent peak attached to Roll Mountain Mountains located close to almost the crater. The Mount Roll Mountain provides an amazing features of uh, Gorongoro Conservation Area. You can enjoy adventure, hiking, and sound down activities to, to the area. Also we have uh, Mount uh, Makarot. It's another uh, volcanic peak located uh, in Gorongoro Conservation Area, close to Gorongoro Crater. Hiking to Mount uh, Makarot rewards a, spe a spectacular view towards the Gorongoro Crater. Lake Ayers, Malanja Depression, Olduvai Gorge, and Lut area. The Makarot and the surrounding area inhabited with the array of flora and fauna to encounter during a hike. The Gold Mountains and Salad Plains are located at the northern end of Ngorongoro Conservation Area, border 
rising from an open shot grass plains to a height of uh, 915 meters. Gold Mountains comprise a series of ridges described as uh, some of the oldest geological formation in the area. Uh, Salt Plains with the uh, nutrition pastures, pastures attracts vast concentrations of uh, migratory animals, such as uh, wild beasts, gazelles, and zebras during the rainy season. Another activities we have uh, attraction we have uh, Maasai cultural. Maasai are semi-nomadic pastoralists with an uh, interesting culture and lifestyle. The Maasai people coexisting with uh, wildlife in the Ngorongoro Conservation Area. Maasai with their fascinating traditional customs and their colorful clothes interest uh, uh, many visitors. Apart from the mentioned attractions with the Gorongoro uh, Lengai Geopark, uh, Gorongoro Conservation Area together the District of Karatu, Honduri and Gorongoro in Arusha region have been endorsed by UNESCO in Nakro 17th, 2018, then become the, best, the first uh, geological paradise in Africa, south of uh, Sahara. This geopark is known as Ngorongoro Rengai UNESCO Global Geopark. It covers rock hills, length underground caves, lake basins, hominid discovery sites, and active old Ngorongoro volcano. Ngorongoro Rengai Geopark boosts about uh, uh, 117 attractions. The main highlights are Ngorongoro Crater, Old by Gorge, Olmoti Crater, Laitori Footprints, Nasera Rock, and uh, Olkarian. Good. So within our areas, there are several activities which can be uh, conducted, and this uh, include uh, game drive, walking uh, and hiking, bed watching, plant certification, hot bush meals, especially this is uh, within the Ngorongoro crater, sundown, hot balloons safari at uh, Olvai Gorge and Ndutu, mountain bike at Nainokanoka to Empakai crater rim, Horse riding, Nasera Rock Remuta to Olkaren Gorge, cultural tour, archaeological tour, as well as a camping safari. Uh, how to access uh, our area is uh, through air via Julius Nyerere International Airport in Dar es Salaam or direct to Kilimanjaro International Airport in Moshi, situated at the foot of uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. Also, from Arusha City to Ngorongoro Conservation Area, the distance is about uh, 160 kilometers of uh, good tarmac road. Apart from the attractions, within the Ngorongoro areas, we have uh, investment opportunities, as described by my colleagues earlier. So uh, the authority offers a range of types of investment in accommodation, from hotels and lodges, semi-permanent camps, tented camps, mobile camps, and uh, picnic sites. Currently, the open sites that are uh, expected to be announced for investment include uh, one Nasera Rock, Olkarian Gorge, Lemuta Hill, uh, Ogol, Ogol Mountain, and uh, Kakesio. So I'd like to take this opportunity to call upon all to visit Ngorongoro and uh, welcome Tanzania. For more information, we have our contacts here. Then you can keep in touch with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Makombe. Um, again, very informative and a nice accelerated presentation. Uh, last but not least, uh, we need to move over to Ms. Beatrice Modest Kessie. Uh, she will be discussing the authentic tourism experiences in the Tanzania National Parks. Uh, Ms. Ke uh, Ms. Beatrice, um, we are quite stumped for time. I think some of the presentations have overrun slightly. So if we can just try and stick this to uh, seven or eight minutes maximum, I'll appreciate that. I do apologize if uh, we have eaten into your time, um, but please do go ahead. We look forward to hearing more about the Tanzania National Parks. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Um, I would like to take you through uh, the presentation. Because of time, I'm going to go a bit fast. Our presentation is going to focus on authentic tourism experiences in Tanzania National Park. And I'm going to cover uh, various areas, uh, including uh, 
Can you please go to the next slide? Um, the uh, presentation is going to cover a, a bit of introduction about Tanzania National Parks, the attractions, uh, tourism activities in the national parks, COVID and healthy safety measures that Tanzania National Parks is taking, uh, the international recognitions that uh, we received, um, tourism trend, and I'm going to, uh, to have a short uh, brief about the tourist reviews and I'll end up with the conclusion. Uh, Tanzania National Parks, TANAPA is a parastatal organization that was established in 1959, and it is mandated uh, to conserve area, all areas designated as national parks in Tanzania mainland. And since it, its establishment in 1951, uh, with one national park, uh, Serengeti National Park, currently, Tanapa manages a total of 22 national parks covering an area of 11% of the country area. And I would like to show you uh, the distribution of the national parks. You can see where Serengeti is. It's at the uh, uh, northern Tanzania. And also you can see Nyerere National Park, which it was formed uh, uh, partly of Seluz National Park. It's just on the southern part of Tanzania. And you can also see uh, Kilimanjaro National Park in northern Tanzania. You can see uh, other national parks in Western uh, Tanzania. So you can see how the national parks are distributed in Tanzania. And uh, we have several uh, tourism attractions uh, in the national parks, but I'm going to talk about few of the attractions. Um, we have the diversity of wildlife and abundancy. Most of our national parks, when you go to the national parks, you see a number of animals, but in big numbers, different types of animals in big numbers. And also we have uh, the great uh, migration of wild, uh, wild beasts in Serengeti. This is one of the major attractions uh, in the national parks, uh, specifically in Serengeti. Uh, also, we have the big five, most of the national parks. Uh, in most of the national parks, you can see either of the big fives, but if you want to see uh, all the big five, you can see them in Serengeti National Park or in Komazi National Park. But we are doing more efforts to ensure that we introduce these uh, rhino in other national parks so that you can see the big five one at a time. Other attractions, we have uh, Mount Kilimanjaro, which is the highest uh, free mount, uh, freestanding mountain uh, in the world. And more have been said uh, with the Honorable Ambassador. But also we have Mount Meru, which is also one of the, it's the second uh, uh, highest mountain in Tanzania. And also we have beach. Uh, when you visit in, the, in, our, in, one, in one of our national parks, including Sadani, you can have a, an opportunity to see the wildlife uh, along the, the, the Indian Ocean. So you can also enjoy the sea, uh, sand, and the sun. And also we have lakes, we have Lake Tanganyika, we have Lake Manyara and other uh, lakes where we, we can do uh, water sport activities. Other attractions, uh, one of the important attractions are the primates. We have the chimpanzees uh, in Gombe, in Mahale, and Rubondo National Park, where you can see uh, the, the, the primates, which are very close uh, to human beings. And also we have uh, uh, flowers. Uh, we have uh, flowers um, in Kitulo National Park, Kilimanjaro National Park, and other national park where you can enjoy a variety of flowers. We know we, we have tourists who are flower lovers. So that one can be offered in the Tanzania National Parks. We also have spectacular landscapes of Serengeti, the endless plains, the, 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 the mountains and, and others. We also have a variety of birds uh, in the national parks. In other national parks, for example, Tarangire, you can see more than 400 species of birds. We also have other attractions, including uh, islands. We have uh, Rubondo Island, Sanane Island, where you can enjoy uh, the, the, the tourism uh, attractions in these, the tourism experience in these islands. We also have the rare and endangered animals. 
uh, in our national parks, the uh, uh, wild dogs and also the rhinos. And apart from the tourism attractions, we also have uh, tourism activities. The tourism activities, we have a number of tourism activities that you can do them inside the national parks. You can do a game drive using a car, but also you can do walking safari where you become close uh, in contact with the, with the nature, but also we have boat excursions where you can, you can view wildlife while you are in the boat, but also you can do canoeing um, activities. You can also um, see the wildlife through the hot air balloon safaris. We have uh, these activities. You can also do camping in the national parks. You can have hot meals in the national parks, but also you can do chimpanzee trekking in the three national parks that I, I mentioned earlier. Uh, other activities uh, include sport fishing. This is also a very uh, uh, fascinating activity in the national park where you, you, can, you can do this activity, but also night game drive, whereby you can see the animals during the night, especially the uh, nocturnos. Horseback riding, kayaking, those are all activities, but also you can do uh, snorkeling, cycling, paragliding, mountain hiking, and other activities are walking safari, canopy walkway, those can be offered in the national parks. But also, as I mentioned earlier, that we have procedures to ensure uh, we, we, we take precautions uh, for the COVID-19. We have the standard operating procedures for COVID-19. This is all to maintain uh, and ensure health uh, to visitors and uh, our staff. Um, also, I said I'm going to talk about the recent international recognitions uh, as national parks. We have received the World Travel Award um, that Serengeti National Park was announced as the Africa's leading national park attraction in 2021. This is the second time that Serengeti wins this award. Also, Serengeti National Park was mentioned by Forbes as one of the best national park in uh, best national park to visit in 2021. Also, um, another recognition was from Mainland Aggregate that Serengeti was one of the most Instagram national park, and we were also recognized by Private Fly Scenic. Uh, uh, Airport that Msembe Airstrip in Ruaha National Park won the first scenic airport in Africa. And the other one was the European Society for Quality Research. Uh, uh, mentioned Tanapa that uh, is the uh, received the best uh, award on uh, European Award for Best Practices 2020. So those are the recent. Um, international recognitions that we received. And now here I'm, I'm just showing you the, 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 the trend of tourists, uh, the international tourists and the, and, the, and the domestic tourists. But generally you can see before COVID tourism trend was growing positively. And after COVID in 2020, uh, from March, we had a uh, decline of tourist numbers, but currently the numbers have started to grow. And we have also have received tourists. For example, in 2019, 2020, we had 108 tourists from Qatar, but also last financial year, that was 2020, 2021, we had 46 uh, tourist visitation from Qatar. And now I would like to share you one review from the, from the tourists, please. The organizer kindly share the review and we will now end up the presentation. Uh, th thank you very much, Ms. Beatrice. Unfortunately, we are literally have about one minute left of the, uh, of the webinar before we get cut off. Um, but we will definitely uh, share that with uh, our audience should they request, I'm happy to do so. Um, and thank you again for your presentation. Uh, again, much appreciated and full of information for, for our attendees and for our audience. Um, unfortunately, again, uh, our question and answer session has been cut short. Um, again, I will uh, encourage any of our audience or our attendees to please get in touch directly with us at uh, Qatar Travel Mart. 
or uh, through the various websites um, from the Tanzania Tourism Organization or directly with, uh, with the, the speakers themselves. And I'm sure that they will be glad to help you. Anything that comes towards us, we will be sure to point in the right direction. Um, and uh, yes, we will make sure that uh, any questions that you have get answered accordingly. Um, just to end off, I would like to, uh, of course, thank all our speakers. As you know now, we have again concluded our webinar. And as we end off today, I would like to extend my gratitude again to all our speakers for joining us and passionately talking to us about the beautiful country of Tanzania. I would also like to thank the Tanzanian Embassy in Qatar for their coordination and hard work that has been put into our seventh edition. And last but definitely not least, to all of our attendees who religiously participate in all our webinars and follow QTM 2021's progress. We hope to see you all soon face to face as the show is close to opening its doors and we look forward to welcoming you to Doha. Thank you again, everyone. And we look forward to uh, welcoming you for our next webinar as well as to meeting you all in November. Thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.